Welcome to the Antle Nairobi office and to our second Antle East Africa Demo Day. I'm Marie, I'm a partner here at Antle East Africa. And I'm Malalita, also a partner here at Antle East Africa. We're very excited to be here today. We have hundreds of viewers with us from around the world, founders, investors, as well as friends of Antler from the startup ecosystem. We're delighted to have you here, and we hope that you'll enjoy the next 45 minutes with us. It's now been 18 months since we started Antler in Nairobi, and time has gone really, really fast. Um, if you were to summarize it, Malalita, what would you say our highlights are? It's been an incredible journey. Um, despite COVID, we have been able to run three cohorts here in Nairobi uh, with a total of 100 founders. 80% of our founders have been from Kenya, uh, as well as the rest of Africa, which is in, in itself has been quite exciting. We have co-created 46 teams and made eight investments. To put it in context, globally, uh, across Antler and 13 locations, we have made over 200 investments over the last three years. And maybe we should also add that we raised a dedicated Antle East Africa fund, uh, which at the moment has more than $7.5 million committed, which means that we can actually sell from the initial eight investments to something like 40, 50 startup investments over the coming years, which is pretty, pretty exciting. I think we've been selective in how we have run the program as well as the investment process. A question that we frequently get is how does one secure the 100k ticket from Antler Nairobi? If you were to summarize some of the commonalities of our eight portfolio companies and their founders, uh, how would you put it, Marie? <laughs> Thank you for giving me the hard questions. Um, I would say um, Founders excel, and I think we see that a lot in our cohorts. They, um, they really excel when they work in areas they know, which I guess is part of the reason why Antler likes to work with founders with around 10 years of average work experience. Uh, it really gives them a head start in, in building um, their businesses quickly. Second, I would say, as you'll see today, many of our teams are multi-African or multinational, which means that they see problems from different angles, um, and hence the startups they're building are not only fit for Kenya, but they also are fit to scale across uh, other countries in Africa or maybe even the world. Um, and I think the last one is, um, even being an entrepreneur myself, um, this is a difficult environment to, to pull up a, a business really. So I think all our founders have shown exceptional grit, drive, ability to use their networks and really hustle to, to do a lot in a very rapid uh, time frame. Um, I really believe you'll see these elements come through in the pitches that we will share a little bit later today. Um, working with great entrepreneurs has been amazing and we're proud to share with you some of our startups shortly. Today you will see four of our initial portfolio companies that received investment last year in January. They have been in operation for about a year. For those of you who were in our first uh, demo day, uh, we hope that it will be interesting for you to see their progress uh, over the last year since you last saw them. But to start, we want to share with you two of our startups that we are unveiling to the public for the first time today from our second portfolio that received investment in June of last year. With that said, let the fun begin. We will now kick off with the two teams from our second Nairobi cohort that passed RIC back in June 2020. These two teams do not only stand out because they have managed to get their businesses off the ground during very difficult COVID-19 circumstances, they both have female CEOs, which is not that common here in the East African startup ecosystem. The first startup is born from passion for cooking, appreciation for convenience, and triggered by the abrupt rise in demand for food deliveries due to COVID-19. As we all know, the COVID lockdown has left families and individuals with their own devices, skills, and creativity to make a healthy, varied diet at home without getting bored of their own recipes. The founders of Cooked have an exceptional founder idea fit with years of experience in the culinary industry. Please welcome the CEO of Cooked, Noni Babage. Traditional grocery retail is time consuming. Did you know that the average shopper spends approximately 300 hours per year in a supermarket? We believe that time poor, digitally savvy consumers are struggling to ensure they eat a healthy, varied diet and are resorting to unhealthy takeaways in the search for convenience. Sourced direct from our trusted suppliers, we do the planning and prepping, allowing you to spend more time on the things you love. Cook's mission is to empower you to become your own chef and grow your skills and confidence in the kitchen. 
We make your life easier by working out a convenient way for you to make healthy and fresh meals. Convenient, healthy, simple, quality at home cooking. Be your own chef with Cooked. At the onset of the corona crisis in Nairobi, my comms with my sister exploded with recipe requests, ingredient help, menu planning, you name it. You see, she's not a natural cook, and it all came to a head one morning when I drove to her house and made her pizza dough, all the while thinking I wish I could put everything she needs in a box and send it with the instructions. At the same time, I found myself juggling three small children while working from home, often late into the night. I found that on most nights, I had very little time to make a delicious fresh meal at home and would end up reheating leftovers or ordering fast food, which was not sustainable. Speaking to friends and family, I found that I wasn't alone in this problem. At Cooked, we aim to deliver convenient, simple, healthy, quality at home cooking experiences, providing our customers with an innovative way to shop and cook healthy meals at home. We provide fresh ingredients, prepped and perfectly portioned with easy to follow recipes, delivered to your door and soon available from leading retailers, making it easier to cook a healthy, fresh meal at home. Our solution appeals to ABC One young urban professionals, individuals, couples or families aged between 25 and 45 years whose monthly household income is above 100,000. In Kenya, the retail industry is worth approximately $7.4 billion. Of this, our target market is the upper income population, which currently stands at about 680,000, of which we estimate half of these to reside in Nairobi. Reaching 34% of this population would imply a serviceable, obtainable market of $120 million. These numbers demonstrate the size of the market should each household purchase a monthly subscription plan over the course of 12 months. Our business comprises of a B2C product alongside a B2B2C one. We've already launched our direct-to-consumer online delivery meal kits with prices ranging from 650 to 750 shillings and an average order value of approximately 2,500, giving us healthy margins as we source the best quality ingredients in large quantities direct from our trusted producers and suppliers. In terms of B2B2C, our ready-to-cook products will focus on quick and easy crowd-pleasing favorites and will be available off the shelf in leading supermarket chains, providing a simple solution for on-the-go customers. We tested the retail channel with great success leading up to Christmas with our special mince pie kits. The retail channel will enable us to cost-effectively build our brand and help in acquiring new customers to our online distribution channel. We at Cooked are innovating how our target customers will shop for and cook food at home, and we believe we're uniquely positioned to do this. There's myself, a private equity professional and founder of the largest regional investor association, growing it from seven founding members to almost 90 from across the region in sub-Saharan Africa. I was most recently a vice president at Emerging Capital Partners, one of Africa's oldest and largest PE firms with over three billion in assets under management. ECP is best known for its acquisition and exit of the Java Group. I'm joined by John, who is one of Kenya's most talented young chefs. He brings a wealth of restaurant experience and culinary expertise, having worked in the finest establishments in Kenya, Switzerland, and Sweden, including a Michelin-starred restaurant within Le Trois Rois Hotel in Basel. Lastly, we brought Martin on board as our Chief Operating Officer. Martin has over nine years' experience in the food and beverage market in, in Kenya, including founding a leading B2B food manufacturing business, and he brings deep operational and logistics experience, business development, and strategy expertise. In the six months that we've been operating, we've incorporated in both Delaware and Kenya and made our first hire. Over a period of three months, we've packed and delivered 300 plus meal kits to over 110 customers. We also began establishing relationships and supplying a number of retailers in December and aimed to expand our location footprint to six large retail chains by the end of 2021. We'd love to start discussions with potential investors with the aim of working towards a close in the first quarter of 2022. Our fundraising will enable us to expand our production capacity, grow beyond Nairobi, and develop an app for subscribers. 
We aim to become the leading multi-product and multi-channel brand that continues to create value for our customers and believe we're the right team to bring this to life. So, be your own chef with Cooked. Hey guys. Hey. Hey, Sam. Hi. Well, welcome. Thank you. That was a great presentation, Noni. Welcome, Cooked team. Uh, Thank you. I have a few questions for you here, just to elaborate on some of the topics you raised during your pitch, uh, Noni. And I'll start with John. So John, you have a very exciting background. You've worked with Michelin star restaurants in Europe. You've worked with big hotels here in Kenya. You are the creator of the cooked recipes. Um, what would you say is the secret sauce for cooked? So I would probably break down the secret sauce into three elements. The first one would be my personal touch. So whenever I'm developing the recipes, I always think to myself, what would I love to cook for myself, for my family, for my friends? And what kind of experience do I want? Um, and also when we're developing the recipes, we always do it like a team or a family and we cook together or test the recipes out together and tweak them in terms of what we'd want to change. And the second um, element I would say is my industry experience. So for instance, um, my f how to operate like a kitchen in terms of prep, um, sanitization um, um, and just tying everything together and then the second thing and the most important thing for us would be our customers and the feedback so whenever we're developing a recipe we always send it out to the customers a select few um, that try out and test the recipes and always give us feedback in terms of like what they found difficult or what they'd like us to change or what the general experience was and then we'll come back, we'll tweak it, and then send it out to the masses. Mm -hmm. yeah. Awesome. OK, sounds great. Um, and thank you for that answer. So the second question is, um, is, is cooked a niche or a mass market product? I think that's a great question, Salam. And um, we're targeting a growing market of uh, customers who visit the supermarket or other modern groceries for their everyday dinner plans, and instead offer them our habit-forming products You know that offer a fresh, healthy and convenient experience. Mm -hmm. Nice, that sounds great. Uh, and what have you learned so far about your customers? Um, I would say we've learned quite a lot actually, um, but the two main things for us would be that, first of all, there's demand for it and there's a need for it in terms of like, people don't have the time to plan and go shopping and develop like a whole healthy menu. Um, and then the second thing was that people want something that's as easy as possible. So we've done a lot of the back work and um, doing the prep from the sources, so making the steps as few as possible to the finished product for the clients, and yeah. Nice. All right, and final question. Uh, are you, have you started fundraising, or are you planning to fundraise in the near future? Um, so we definitely want to start having conversations with investors from today. Mm -hmm. um, and having been on the other side, I know how long fundraising can take. Mm -hmm. So we want to use the time to develop relationships with them um, and to allow investors to see how we work as a team and to see our business grow. But I anticipate in an ideal scenario, we'd have a close in the first quarter of 2022. Right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again. And good luck building the cooked brand. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Our second startup to join the stage is Uncover. Uncover is set out to fill the gap in the rising demand for reliable, affordable, and accessible skincare solutions across Africa. The founders of Uncover, who met for the first time here at the Antler Nairobi program, are passionate about the skincare industry. In fact, both founders have had personal experiences here in Nairobi where finding good skincare products, advice regarding their own skincare issues, and a community for product advice have been difficult. Since their launch, their product has received overwhelming response from the market. And we're extremely excited to reveal Uncover to the investor community for the first time today. Please welcome the CEO of Uncover, Katrin Lee. When we announced the launch of Uncover in Kenya, almost 1,000 women aged 18 to 45 responded to our skincare survey, sharing with us their need for knowledge and products for safe, 
affordable, and healthy skincare to solve persisting skincare concerns. My home country, Korea, is 12 years ahead in skincare globally, so we decided to bring the global best to Kenya to help us solve our skincare challenges here. Having sold thousands of products in our first 10 days at Kenya's biggest retail chains, and having created an unprecedented content platform where our skin formational videos garner thousands of views in their first hours, our vision is to revolutionize self care, health, and well being with a digital community built on trust, learning, and sharing for Africa's women across the continent and globally. We want to grow together towards confidence and empowerment. I'm Catherine, CEO and co founder of Uncover. We want to revolutionize self care on the continent. Luciana lives in my home of Nairobi, Kenya. She and many women like her who have written on cover have been stuck in their search for better skincare. We all want to take the healthiest care of our face, but it's not easy with lacking pertinent digestible information and limited choice of innovative, cost effective products. Uncover launched a skincare survey and got nearly a thousand voluntary responses in a week. Women really wanted us to hear them on this topic. The top skin concerns are post-acne hyperpigmentation, oiliness, and texture, which are all improvable through a change in skincare routine and behavior. Over two in three reported a pain point of knowledge, and nine out of 10 want to learn by video. Uncover will solve these problems by becoming the continent's most trusted skincare brand, offering not only products, but also knowledge and community. Our carefully developed products will leverage global top skincare innovation from Korea, known to be 12 years ahead and where happen to come from for skin needs here locally. Our content platforms will offer knowledge, engaging an audience with skin turntainment videos and other digital education. And through the above, we will build a community of women who partake in self-care challenges to inspirational real women feature stories. We are excited by the market opportunity for skincare in Africa. Annual skincare spend in our test market of Kenya is $250 million. And when we widen the net to our next target countries, the market is 2 billion. Annual skincare spend in the continent totals to 4 billion, but it is the explosive growth that excites us most. At East Africa's top e-commerce site, skincare grew 400% in 2019 and is estimated to have grown even more in 2020. East Africa's largest pharmacy chain tells us that facial skincare is their fastest growing category. And that's exactly why we want to grab this opportunity now. Not only is the skincare market in Africa at a critical inflection point, skincare is historically recession proof and Corona times have been no different globally. There's also a global move towards a natural, healthy look over a made up, covered up look. And the growth of mobile data bodes well for content consumption. Uncover's business model is an iterating learning cycle using customer data to build the first client-led line of skincare. After developing our products using latest ingredients, tech, and safety tests from Korea with top manufacturers, we'll market and sell with top retail chains, and in 2021, we'll launch our own e-commerce. Our product sales are fueled by our content platform and our community. Uncover's launch month, December 2020, proved we are heading in the right direction. Our first product, sheet masks chosen for convenience, fun, affordability, and cater for skin concerns expressed in Uncover's survey, sold more than 3,000 units in the first month. Our products are being sold at six of Kenya's top pharmacy, well-being, and cosmetic chains. We also garnered high social media engagement with a purely organic approach. This year, we will expand to four products, 20 retail partnerships, and two to three geographies. Our three-year plan is to have launched 20 skincare products, 100 retail partnerships in 10 geographies, with monthly revenue of half a million dollars and a community of five million. The Uncover team is passionate, enterprising, and complimentary. I am an economist turned award-winning film director, and I've led women's empowerment project teams across 17 countries. I aim to use the power of narrative to create an unparalleled brand, community, and skin entertainment. Sneha, my co-founder, has grown enterprises across 10 African markets with her background in finance and business strategy. 
Our colleagues include Patricia, Kenya's number one skincare influencer, and Gina, our Korea director who hails from Wishtrend, a global K-beauty content platform with millions of subscribers. The team is lucky to be advised by experienced leaders from Pixie and Sephora. If you'd like to uncover this journey with us, here are two ways to do so. We look forward to building Africa's leading data-driven self-care brand with you. Thank you. Hi. Hey, hey, Katrin and Sneha. Hi. That was a great presentation. And I have a few questions for you just to elaborate on some of the topics that you've touched up on on the picture. And the first question is, why should people choose you and not other brands? What makes you different? So the Uncover brand is going to bring to the continent attributes that have never been seen together in any other brand. Uh, for starters, we will be the first client data-driven brand uh, that is understanding local skincare needs and solving this through global best technology from Korea, which is the Paris of skincare and one of the leaders in innovation. Uh, secondly, our products are going to be natural and effective and sound more like a health food recipe than a periodic table, which is what a lot of mass market brands here sound like. And then finally, we're the first brand that is actually going beyond products to solve the biggest skincare pain point, which is knowledge. Um, through our content platform and through the community we're building, uh, where we want to empower women. Awesome. Actually good that you picked up on, on the, the community aspect of things, because my second question was about that in particular. Um, why do you think community building is key to the success of new skincare products like Uncover in Africa? I think that after the privilege of a decade of working with women on projects in Africa and other continents, what I feel so strongly about is that we all want to be heard and connect with each other, and that's just a human need, actually. And so even when it comes to the realm of skincare, I feel like the fact that nearly a thousand women responded to our survey uh, within the span of a week just really shows that there is that desire to be part of a group that cares about something together and can also support each other. And when it comes to universal insecurities we have around you know, outer and inner beauty, I think this is really essential. And um, I believe, actually, Sneha, you have an experience that's quite relevant here. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. A couple of years ago, I had a very negative experience with my skin where I used some harsh products and I burnt my entire face. And uh, it was the lowest point in my confidence and I was quite traumatized. And I really do believe that, you know, a community would have helped. There was really nowhere to go for advice or support locally. And uh, yeah, so personally, I really feel the, the strength of, of women coming together and supporting each other and why that's important. Thank you for that answer. Um, and my last question for you is, where do you see Uncover in the future? What's the grand vision for the brand? Yeah, I mean, so as you've already heard in the pitch, um, in three years, we expect to be in a number of different African markets with a full suite of skincare products as one of the most trusted skincare brands on the continent. But beyond that, we think we can use our data-driven approach to uh, establish authority in other segments uh, within skincare, such as men's uh, skincare products, as well as other self-care categories, where we really do think we can become a self-care authority on the continent. Cool. Well, thank you so much, and good luck with your journey. Thank you. Thank you. The next four startups are from our very first Antler Nairobi cohort who went to market about 9 to 12 months ago. Some of you might remember them from our very first demo day back in February 2020. These four startups will update you on the progress since their launch, share some of their learnings and traction to date. Please stay tuned to hear from our Antler Nairobi cohort one founders, iFluence, Digiduka, ChapChapGo and Ani Health. Hi, my name is Nelson Aseka. I'm the CEO of iFluence. Hi, I'm Lamusia Anzaya, COO at iFluence. Well, how iFluence was born was uh, that we realized people are the new media companies because influencer marketing is the fastest growing 
media channel today due to the growing ad blocking movement and that key demographic are not spending enough time in front of the TV. So marketers have quickly realized that their customers trust recommendations from people that they relate to. But despite this being a really impactful channel, we have surveyed across you know, uh, brand teams globally and have found out the biggest problem in influencer marketing is measurement of ROI. So we developed iFluence and uh, put AI at the core of what we do to be able to accurately match influencers to brands, run end-to-end -end influencer marketing campaigns, and most importantly, bring transparency in the measurement of impact. So how it works is that we use or deploy an audience-first mechanic where we first uh, gain deeper insights into the target audience using psychographic, behavioral, and sentiment analysis and re-engineer the process to be able to identify individuals or potential influencers who would have impact to that target audience. We then further analyze these uh, potential influencers to narrow down uh, to the right people who will have number one, brand connection, I mean brand affinity, uh, secondly emotional connection with the target audience, and then thirdly we run a brand security audit just to find people who have values which are in sync with the brand. So this is the right time to present this solution because Africa is the fastest growing social media market in the world. Um, Africans tend to be storytellers um, by, in terms of their culture. And this means that it is easier to drive authentic influencer type conversations um, using our um, type of platform. Um, the African market is about $10 billion in terms of advertising spend. Uh, globally, we're talking a advertising market of about $560 billion. And the platform works um, globally as well. Um, so Africa is where we are now, um, but we can, we can sort of spread across. So we were admitted into Antler's first cohort in Africa in 2019 and received pre-seed funding from Antler um, late in that year. We had our MVP ready in March 2020 and as we all know, that's just about when COVID um, hit. So despite that challenge, we were, however, able to pivot and then be able to do some COVID awareness um, work uh, in 2020. We are now about one year old with a team of 10 across three countries. In terms of what we've been able to deliver for our customers, for Safaricom, the leading telco in Eastern Central Africa, we're able to de deliver about 20% above their target in a campaign we run for them. For Sony, we delivered a $60,000 sales uplift in December. And for Amref Diffid, who we worked with on the COVID campaign, we, were about, we delivered about 56% above their target reach. Um, we have also been able to begin our expansion into West Africa um, and are having a lot of conversations um, for multi-country briefs in the continent. In the short term, we want to quickly leapfrog and you know, gain Africa market dominance by setting up subsidiaries across South Africa, Egypt, and Nigeria, uh, because these are the hubs of, uh, of our key clients, the key accounts who would be multinationals. Uh, the second thing is to develop, quickly accelerate the development of our SaaS module, because we see this as our highest income generating model in, within the next three to five years. And uh, apart from that, we look to ensure that we keep innovating and keep ahead of you know, the industry. I think we are the right team to do this because if you look at the skill sets and complementary you know, kind of ex uh, backgrounds and experiences across the team, we have a really strong set of co-founding team, starting with Lamusia, who has a great experience in finance, investment advisory, uh, and operations and has worked with blue chips companies such as PwC. And we have George who has worked in the leading, who has over 18 years marketing experience, working with the leading uh, ad and creative agency out of UK and Europe, looking after EMEA region and with great successes. And then myself, I have had over 10 years experience in growing global markets, brands across sub-Saharan African region. Uh, using very specific influencer marketing and brand advocacy strategies which have advised uh, you know, the growth or the development of the platform and uh, you know, have had several success stories on the same. We are currently closing a 1 million seed round uh, which will see us uh, uh, expand into the region. Also it will help us develop our tech 
to ensure we uh, get our SaaS model out. And so we invite you investors to come in for this round or join us in the next Series A, uh, which we are looking to close by mid-2022. Hi, my name is uh, Roy Njoka uh, and I'm the co-founder of Digiduka. So at Digiduka, we noticed a problem in Kenya, which incidentally is a country that invented mobile money, right? The problem really was around the informal retail trade, where a majority of the transactions at this level are still done in cash, up to 98% of payments. And this is really driven by the fact that uh, informal retailers and the low-income consumers they serve uh, tend to, to use cash in order to avoid the high transaction fees that are associated with mobile money up to 7%. We found that it was important for us to convert these segments onto digital payments um, so that they can you know, start to enjoy the convenience, uh, safety, uh, and increased access to, to formal credit that comes with uh, transacting digitally. So our solution is built around digitizing the, the cash economy, which is worth around $700 billion in sub-Saharan Africa alone. Our platform aggregates essential digital services such as prepaid power tokens, bus ticketing, TV bill payments, even government take payments. And our business model allows us to make it a lot cheaper for end consumers to pay at their local kiosk. And we also give these uh, kiosks or informal retailers the opportunity to make more money by giving them access to this uh, digital inventory. You know, it's one thing to build uh, a digital payment solution, but you really need to also be able to drive the right use cases to, to encourage these segments to take up the product. So we looked at addressing uh, three key pillars with our product. The first is allowing informal retailers to be able to accept digital payments at little to no extra cost. The second is uh, giving them access to uh, digital inventory, such as uh, bus ticketing. And the third is to allow them to be able to put their inventory online and start selling um, online. So we've experienced amazing growth uh, over the last nine months where we've been able to bring on 4,800 new users onto our platform um, and they've transacted over $260,000 in, in, that, in that period. Customer experience has been uh, core to, to, to our product and how we do things. And so far we've been able to maintain a 4.9 star rating on the Google Play Store. This industry, it really needs uh, deep insights um, and the experience that comes with uh, you know, being part of the industry for a long time. I've built uh, a nine-year career in the telco industry, uh, mostly around mobile payments. I previously uh, built the M-Pesa bill payments product by 40 times in just 18 months. Um, I've also worked with uh, Telcom to, to start up their mobile money proposition, Tcash. My co-founder and CTO, uh, Lovell, has previously built solutions for the largest telcos on the continent, that's MTN and Vodafone. And he's also worked with big brands like uh, BBC, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, um, as well as Google. Our ask is really participation in our seed round. Uh, we are raising $500,000 um, as part of our seed round. And this really will go towards uh, acquisition of 30,000 new kiosks within the year and uh, driving transactions of about $4.5 million um, by the end of the year. So far, we've been able to raise uh, $85,000 um, out of this. My name is Sud Haida, co-founder and CEO of uh, Chop Chip Co. So we initially set out to hack FMCG uh, by bringing better value to consumers via digital commerce. Uh, we served and interacted with 500 clients, uh, 300 of whom were merchants. Through this process, we transacted over 3,000 transactions worth over $130,000 uh, in value in nine months. So these gave us insights into the difficulties of digitizing commerce in Kenya firsthand. And we realized that despite the resounding success of M-Pesa, uh, managing money as a business in and out of M-Pesa was like pulling teeth. 
uh, there's a lot of manual processes that still had to be done and automating it was just a pain. So based on our first-hand experience, and we did solve this for ourselves and other merchants were actually asking for the solution. We decided to take a back seat and see how we can productize um, our technology uh, for the thousands, tens of thousands of merchants uh, out there and to allow them to sell online without any hassle. So prior to COVID, already most of the digital sales in Kenya were happening through uh, uh, social media. Dominantly then was Facebook groups. But after COVID, uh, we are seeing a lot of brick and mortar operators digitizing their operations uh, in order for them to still remain in business. And a good number of them, because they're comfortable on WhatsApp, started selling on WhatsApp. Uh, you're seeing people selling on Instagram, people selling on TikTok and on Twitter. And managing a business and managing these channels, uh, especially on the accounting and payment front, is extremely difficult. And your typical merchant has a big problem, one, adopting to these new channels. But the critical problem here is how do they uh, manage the checkout experience and account for the money and inventory. And organized, predictable, and efficient digital commerce trading is still a massive problem that we feel that you know, has to be solved. So our solution is a tool set for simplifying multi-channel digital commerce. Uh, we provide invoicing, unified invoicing and payment uh, processing via the dominant uh, payment option, which is M-Pesa, uh, through multiple channels. So as many channels as a business wants to support from Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, and whatnot, those can be added and removed because our, our, our payment solution isn't uh, tied to a particular channel. We automate the reconciliation and accounting and inventory management. This allows businesses to spend a lot more time focusing on their fundamentals rather than uh, you know, doing a lot of data entry and figuring out was something paid or not paid. This leads to 10 times faster processing and a seamless checkout experience for the consumer. And because there's limited human intervention, there is little chance for errors. So the businesses can operate as they used to and become more, uh, more efficient. Um, I have over 12 years experience in digital strategy and uh, product management. My co-founder Amin has over 10 years experience in uh, full stack development. We have known each other for the last six years. Half of this time we've actually worked together on different projects. We've launched products in uh, the Middle East and in um, the US. Uh, we're both from Africa, uh, different parts of Africa. He's from North Africa, I'm from East Africa. We're super passionate about solving tech for Africa by Africans. And you know we think we can take this to the next level. We'd like to see ourselves working and solving problems um, for the rest of the continent and similar countries uh, across the world. Most importantly, we're looking for strategic partnerships, uh, either with organizations that have payment issues or organizations that have clients that have critical payment uh, issues uh, on the digital side. Uh, we'd like to work with them, uh, show them our solution, pilot it, and see how much better it is than well, what currently is there in the market. Uh, secondly, we're looking for referrals. Uh, we're a new business, a uh, young startup. Um, uh, we'd like to kind of get much closer to product market fit. And feedback, uh, any feedback people have on the product or on our solution would more than happily uh, even pay, pay for it with coffee. Uh, to, uh, to get, you know, exactly what people want. Hello, everyone. My name is Amar Moneke, and I am the CEO of Ani Health. Ani Health is a point of need credit facility for primary healthcare. Our passion is to bridge the gap in access to healthcare in Africa, and we have started in Lagos, Nigeria. The reality is that healthcare bills often pose financial shocks to majority of the population, and especially in Nigeria, where over 90% of our 200 million plus population do not have health insurance coverage, which you see as a common alternative when a patient can't afford to pay their healthcare bill. Is it that the patient is detained at a hospital after receiving care or outrightly refused care? Now, these are the problems that Any Health is trying to solve. Any Health is solving these problems through partnerships. We have partnered with hospitals and patients are notified 
of our product right there at the waiting area and they are assisted by the hospital to download our app and apply for a loan on the spot. Approved loans, immediately uh, the money is transferred directly to the hospital's bank account and the patient receives care and, and they leave. Growing up and living in Nigeria, I have in multiple situations where people can't afford to pay for healthcare. But then you hear of stories where people die of very, very easy, curable primary healthcare issues. What we cover is roughly $40. Talking okay, if people have access to healthcare at that very primary level, uh, it would have prevented deaths, you would have expanded people's access, uh, people's life expectancy, people's quality of life. Our business model is unique. We have both a B2B and a B2C business model where the hospitals pay us a one-time facilitation fee for every healthcare bill we cover, and the borrower pays us a monthly interest rate over a two-month period. Not only is it sector-focused, it's at a point of need of the patient, but also every single loan that we approve is solely for healthcare. It reduces our risk exposure, ensuring that our default rate is better calculated and ultimately leading to a fairer interest rate uh, for the patient. We spent the better half of uh, last year building and developing our product, uh, which we launched in October. And within that period since launch, we have signed up 14 partner hospitals and we have 11 more uh, in the pipeline. But due to the, to the stress that hospitals are currently under given the COVID-19 situation, we have quickly learned to optimize our product to include COVID-19 testing and a unique product for HPV vaccination for women, which is also a focus for the sector as well. Oh, the future is, uh, is very exciting for us. We're currently engaging uh, with investors uh, to join our journey. Our hope is that by the end of Q2 of this year, we would have raised a seed round of $300,000. What this would do, it would not only give us an 18 month runway, uh, having served 10,000 patients, working with 100 partner hospitals, but it will also ensure that the company introduces two new interesting products uh, by the end of the year. The first of which is an on-the-spot insurance coverage where we work with multiple health uh, insurance providers offering patients the opportunity to convert their loan into an on-the-spot insurance coverage. And the second one is a unique product for emergency C-section for pregnant mothers where we connect with mothers at early in the pregnancy and help them plan and save. We are uh, committed to bridging the gap in access to healthcare in Africa. And if you're passionate, um, and if I've been able to connect with you, please feel free to reach out and connect with us. Thank you. Great, so that was it. Thank you so much everyone for joining us today at Antler Nairobi's second demo day. Feel free to reach out to the startup teams. If you weren't previously able to capture their contacts, you can also reach out to them at the Antler demo day website by clicking get in touch under each startup. If you'd like to reach out to the Antler East Africa team, please email us at nairobi at antler.co. And let's also mention towards the end that we are kicking off our next uh, cohort on March 8th. So if you know anyone that you think might be interested to apply as a founder, please refer them to our website, www.antler.co. Um, with that said, thank you so much, everyone, for watching, and we look forward to keeping in touch.